Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to make this scene inside Unreal Engine 5. So I'm going to teach you everything, the whole process from start to finish. Before we start, a huge shout out to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. So thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. So we are going to create an empty level right here. And the way you create an empty level is you go in the file and you can select new level. So this will bring up all the level templates and just select the empty level. So to start, we are going to bring in some lighting elements in a scene. So to add lights again, there are two ways. So you can add them manually or you can use the environment light mixer. So I'm going to use the environment light mixer in this video. And if you don't know about the environment light mixer, the environment light mixer is a very cool uh, way to add lights in your scene. So let me show you how it works. So just click on environment light mixer and that's going to open up a window right here. So first we are going to create a skylight in our scene. Now, if you don't know what a skylight is, skylight is basically responsible for indirect lighting. After the skylight, we are going to add a direction light. So here it's called a atmospheric light and the atmospheric light is the sun in your scene. So after the atmospheric light, you can create a sky atmosphere. So this is going to give you a sky atmospheric system. And after that, we can add an exponential height fog. Also, you need to turn on real time in the skylight. Now we can go in the exponential height fog options and turn on volumetric fog. So volumetric fog is really quite important for a uh, realistic fog. Now, if you want to rotate the sun, you can press this shortcut and that is how you can like rotate the sun. And again, the sun is because of the direction light. So if you delete the direction light, we are not going to get that sun. You can also select the direction light and you can check all of these options down. So you can change the intensity, the scattering. So I feel that this is really cool and uh, this is all you need to do for the lighting of the scene. Let's go to selection mode right there and let's change the mode from selection to landscape. So let's create a landscape. So I'm going to leave everything to the default options and just press create. So after creating the landscape by default, Unreal is going to uh, go in the sculpting mode. So this is the landscape sculpting mode. So creating height variations is very important because we don't want the landscape to be totally flat, right? So we need to have some height variation and that will contribute in the realism of our scene. So always when you are creating environments, especially natural environments, landscapes or mountains or something, make sure that you have some height variation. It should not be totally flat as that is going to give you a very unnatural uh, look. And here, as you can see, I'm very conservative about the height variation here. So I just need those subtle height variations. So after you have created those height variations with a sculpt brush, you can select the smooth brush as well. And then you can tap to like smooth these uh, bumps. So after we have created our landscape, let's go to Quixel Mega Scans. And we are going to add some assets. So let's search for desert ground. And I'm going to add this asset in the scene. So make sure that you download this on the highest quality. And after downloading each asset, remember you have to import that asset. So after that, you can search for Canyon or ledge right there. So I'm going to use this particular asset. So download that on the nanite quality and you can add that in the scene. After that, you can search for yellow rabbit bush. So this is like a grass object. So download this as well. And lastly, you can search for cactus. So I've imported all of these assets in my project. So now let's start with adding the ground material to the landscape. So to add this material to the landscape, 
select that material, select the landscape. And if you scroll down, you will see a landscape material uh, option. So just press that button and that's going to apply the selected material. So there we go. We have a landscape that is looking pretty good. If your landscape material and the texture is repeating a lot, you can open up this material, turn on tiling and you can change the X and the Y tiling. So this will reduce the repetition in your texture. Now let's add a post process volume. I forgot to add this actually in the lighting setup. So just add that in the post process, search for infinite extents and make sure to turn that on. So infinite extents will make sure that the post process volume is applied to the whole level. Next you can search for exposure, turn on minimum and maximum brightness values and set those to one. And you will notice that our scene has been brightened up. So you need to select the direction light and reduce the intensity a bit. So I'm just changing the rotation of the sun here. Okay. So this looks pretty good. Now we are going to add some foliage meshes into our scene. So to create some foliage, you can go to the foliage mode and here you can see that unreal is telling you to drop foliage assets here. So if you go to the 3d plants folder, you will see this folder and this is the foliage asset that we added. So these are all static meshes. And if you want to do, you could directly place this asset in the scene, but this method is not optimized and we need to convert the static mesh into a foliage asset first. And there's a good technical reason for it. So if you place this like that, so this will be a static mesh and each static mesh has its own draw call. But if you place this as a foliage asset, that is going to have one draw call. So if you are doing grass or something, and if you have a lot of these assets, it's always good to like uh, convert those assets to a foliage mesh. So you can select any mesh from here. I'm going to select this one and just drag it into the foliage. So now that asset is converted into a foliage asset. So now you can select the single tool and just click to place these grass assets. So let's do the same thing for the cactus. So this is again a static mesh. So drag it into the foliage panel right here. Also make sure that there's a tick mark option on each asset. So that tick mark is for like enabling this asset. So if you have these both enabled, you're going to place those both assets at one time. So make sure that you are enabling one asset at a time and using the single tool and then placing these assets. So I'm going to place some cactus meshes in the scene, something like that. And if you wanted to move a particular foliage asset, you can select the select tool and then you can select that asset and move it. So this looks pretty good. So we have placed around six cactus meshes. So disable the cactus and enable the grass and you can start populating your scene with this asset. And again, you can see that I'm a bit conservative when it comes to like the numbers of these foliage assets. So I'm not going to place a lot of these meshes, just a few of them, which are in the camera view. You could again play with the lighting of your scene. The lighting is very important. Now, lastly, let's add the Canyon asset into our scene. So remember we had imported this Canyon asset. So you will find that in the 3d assets folder. So just click and drag to add it in the scene. So something like that looks good. So you can press control D and you can duplicate that asset, move it there. So currently you can see that the Canyon color and the ground color doesn't match. So it looks like the Canyon is like a different asset from a different biome. And we don't want that. So we need to match uh, the color of the Canyon as closely as possible to the ground. So everything should look seamless. So we can do that by opening up the material for this. So here you will find an option for albedo tint. Albedo means the color. So you can just give it a tint. 
So I'm going to give it a yellowish tint. So now as you can see, this looks way better than before, but this is still looking like it's out of place. So to fix that, you can open up the texture of this. So you will find the texture in that asset folder. So just open up this and this is going to open up in the texture editor. So I'm going to turn down the saturation to 0.9. And I'm going to change the U to about 15. So a saturation of 0.9 and a U value of 15. So just save that. And this will take some time to save because this is using an 8K map. And if you go back in your scene, you can see that the asset is matching the ground really well. And again, if you want to do this in an external application like Photoshop or something, you could completely do that as well. So this is called color matching and this is very important. If you don't want to do this, there's an advanced way of blending assets using virtual textures and that is really complex. So I'll maybe cover that in a different video, but this is a beginner video. So I wanted to keep things simple. So this is looking good. I'm going to stop here. Now let me show you how to create a camera animation. So for the animation, you can add a camera. So under the cinematic, you can add a cinematic camera actor right there. Right click on the camera and snap this camera to the viewport view. Select the camera in the world outliner and you can change the name of this camera to be organized. Now, if you go down in the details panel, you have a lot of different settings for this camera. So the most important setting here is the lens setting. So change the lens settings to custom and you can change the min and max focal length to 22 millimeters. Now let's switch to the camera view and you can easily do that by going here and selecting your camera. Now to create the animation, you can go to the cinematic panel and add a level sequence. So save this level sequence and that will open up the sequence of panel. So the sequence of panel is where we do all the animation. So in order to animate the camera, you can drag the camera from the world outliner into this sequencer. So we have the transform options right here. So we can animate this. So go to the beginning of your animation and just press that button to add a keyframe. Go to the last frame and you can move your camera however you like. So if you wanted to create a zoom in animation, you can move it further and just add a keyframe there. We have created an animation here. So you can think of keyframes as a uh, snapshots of your scene. So we have added the keyframe on the first frame. Then we go to the last frame, move the camera and then add a keyframe there. So we have two different positions of the camera on different frames and unreal is basically interpolating between those positions. And that's how you get an animation. Now for the last part of this video, we are going to learn how to render this. So to render this, I'm going to use Unreal's internal rendering uh, engine. So that's using the sequencer for rendering. So you can press that button. So this is going to open up the render settings. So first we have the image output format. And this is really important because a lot of people uh, comment about this particular thing. So we are going to use the default settings. So I'm going to leave it as a video sequence. So your final render is going to be a video file. Next, you can change the resolution to 1080p. Down here, you can enable texture streaming if you like. In the compression, make sure that you are setting that to 100. And this is where like video files are not that good. Like if you want to show this to a friend or something or upload this on social media, like it's completely fine to use a video. So for beginners, I'm going to recommend that you use the video file right there down and the general we have output directory. So this is the actual folder where your render is going to be stored down under the animation in the advanced options. 
You can change the start and the end frames of your animation if you want. Change the warmer frame count to 32 and change those settings to one second. Everything is looking pretty good now. So you can press the capture movie button to render this out. And you're going to get a video file without any hassles. And you can share that with your friends or on social media. So yeah, that's it. So this is how easy it is to make something like this inside Unreal Engine 5. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. It helps a lot. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. That's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.